Hello, web friends. Hope everyone's doing good today. And let's see. Today, I want to greet you with a fist bump. Here we go. Good. Now, I know yesterday, Miss Debbie told you that we're going to be reading three different versions of the three little pigs. And then in our Zoom meeting, we're going to talk about the three different stories. And we're going to compare and contrast, which means we're going to see how they're the same and how they're different. And also, we might want to vote on our favorite story. So today, I'm going to read you the true story of the three little pigs by a wolf. The wolf is telling this story. And he told his story to John. This is a funny name. Siska? I'm not really sure if that's the right way to say it. Anyway, and it was illustrated by Lane Smith. So here we go. The true story of the three little pigs. Now here's the wolf talking. He says, everybody knows the story of the three little pigs. Or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault, wolves and cute little animals like, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, it's not my fault, wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So, I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig. And he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into somebody else's house, so I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed a great sneeze. Can you sneeze? Achoo! And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. Oh, there he is. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, 
pig, are you in? He yelled back. Go away, wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. Ha choo! And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. And when the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Now you know food will spoil if you leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling better and I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knock on the door, no answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and he wouldn't give me one a little cup for my dear, sweet, old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when my, I felt my cold coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Ah-choo! And then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. That was kind of rude. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. And when the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. they say is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar? Oh, he's... Did y'all like that version? I really do, it's funny. Okay, so I think Miss Debbie's gonna read you the next book, maybe today, and then when we get together, we'll talk about them. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you later. Love you, bye-bye.